welcome to another live stream. Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm back. There's not a, a ORG podcast today because I, well, I don't know. I don't know why, but, <laughs> oh, scheduling conflict. I just realized I may have accidentally connected to the wrong internet. So I apologize if this is choppy, but uh, I may have connected to the wrong internet. But anyway, I'm here, it's Friday. I'm doing my usual live stream and I know it's an hour late, but it is noon somewhere. Shout out to my mountain time people here in, in the United States. Uh, but it is noon somewhere. I try to, again, I try to go live stream every Friday at noon, uh, but it didn't work out today. So I, I did one o'clock central, but Hey, it's, it's noon, it's noon somewhere and it's, it's the mountain time. It's noon. So, uh, unfortunately I, I am a, a still a little later than I wanted to. I was trying to set up a duck cam here. So here's my duck cam. So we got some baby ducks this time. And, uh, those are some ducks that my wife rescued. As you can tell, it is a hundred and one degrees, uh, right now in in texas and it's hot so those are our baby ducks we we kind of rescued them so what happens sometimes is uh photographers will go and get baby ducks for 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 pictures and stuff uh and then they don't know what to do with them so my wife adopted them our, our neighbor got them from a photographer and then she he gave them to us because she he knew that my wife loved ducks so that's that's our baby ducks right there that we're dealing with now i don't know how long we're gonna have this baby duck cam because I'm having camera issues and somehow my camera, my baby duck camera outside is disconnecting my camera that's inside, which is really weird. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's like they're the same camera, but they're not. They're my phones. And I tried to use my daughter's phone and it didn't work. Uh, she has installed an app that somewhere on here that I can't find that puts an ad on there and then cuts me off. So anyway uh today we are going to do something I, i'm going to do a little experiment and i'm going to live stream it and we'll, we'll see how it turns out uh this is a combination of a uh, let me show this to you it's kind of a, a weird thing so they want a two arm comp what i call a compact rpe and a fixed bite plate, but they want it all in one appliance. Here on EZRX, they just put two appliances on one uh, model, but that's what we're gonna attempt to make today. Now, I have made some before. You can check my um, Facebook for my Retainer Designer Facebook. Let me see if I can actually bring that up so you can see it. Uh, and it is the same thing, but with, uh, I just, curled the ends in and made the bite plate and then just cut the bite plate. So they're kind of floating there. So I wanted to try one uh, with tubes, I guess is what you would say. Um, let's see, it's on my retainer designer store. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Sorry, hold on, just say, hold on. Uh, I don't know why it's doing this. So let's, oh, here we go. So let me share my screen here so you can see what I am talking about. So uh, share screen. Yeah, we'll do the Facebook one. So there we go. Let me add that. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. So this is a bike plate and a uh, compact, what I call a compact RPE, what some people may call a two arm RPE. And so, but as you can see, there is a, a slit down the middle i hope fully you can see it there in that picture there's a uh, just so i just take the arms all the way forward i make little loops uh it keep them nice and far apart and then uh do my little acrylic block and then i slice it in half now they do move a little bit but i use thick wire like 040 wire to do this and uh, that way they can um it, it will help uh it will still do its job. I think I got another picture. There it is on the model. So this one actually has a little bit of a room on this model. Let me uh, turn this off real quick. Uh, and remove. So this one actually has a... Uh, sorry for the blue color on this, but 
the models are dark, some of the camera and the, the background's dark, so it's kind of hard to, to get the lighting right on here. But as you can see, it's nice and um, wide already in the front. So I think that the uh, the two, when I slice them, it's gonna be kind of uh, uh, mobile in a way. I could use even thicker wire if I wanted to, 045 or 051 or something like that. Uh, and I think that it would work just fine. But I'm gonna try this one thing where it's a tube uh, where it slides in, in one or and out the other. Uh, well, I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Let me prep this, uh, get this ready for the bite plate. Uh, I'm gonna just do a little bit of waxing here. Uh, get this ready. I'm not gonna paint it yet because I'm gonna be doing a, a little bit of work on here. Uh, let's see, let's try preview. Uh, I'm gonna do a picture in picture here. You know, just try to be all fancy and stuff. Uh, let's do this. Okay. So I've already already got the band. So if y'all have seen my videos before, this is a 3D printed model. I've digitally ditched the bands, as you can see here. In here. And then uh, I have taken the bands that were provided by the doctor so this is a local doctor so i'll go pick up they do plaster models sometimes and i'll go pick up those plaster models and they'll have a package of bands with the patient's name on it so we put them together and so after this comes out of the the uh 3d printer we'll, we'll put bands on them and uh do it that way so i'm going to use 040 wire And again, let me, uh, all right, so this is our last view of the baby ducks. They're, they're really hot. They, they usually go swimming when they get real hot. We got a little uh, uh, pan of water there for them. So they're just chilling out. So we may not see them again because I'm going to have to reconnect my phone here uh, to make sure that, yep, there it goes. It... All right. That is so weird that that does that. this a little bit okay so let me find my tube here oh here's one kind of already done um, you can kind of see what I'm gonna go for I'm going to weld this is actually kind of smaller than I was wanting I do not think that my 040 wire will go into this one No, no, that, that tube has the wrong inner diameter. I think I have another one over here in my, all right. So I'm actually going to cut this, get it a nice fresh opening. So there's my opening. I'm going to take another burr and I'm going to just lightly waller out that hole. Waller, that's a Texas term. Just kind of make sure the, the, that is open. So let's find my 040 wire that I was carrying around. Yeah, there we go. I just gotta make sure it fits in there before I attempt this. There we go. There is some junk or something in there. There we go. So you can kind of see how, what we're gonna do here. So this is a, a tube. And ideally you wanna do a, uh, 030 inside that, but I'm going to try to attempt this 040. I think I can get it to work. And it's going to slowly open. It's not going to be, I mean, it will slowly, as, as fast as the rapid palatal expander. So we are actually going, I think I'd like to put this on this side. I'm going to line this up in the middle right here. And as the expander opens, it's going to open. 
So it's going to be supported, nice and supported, uh, as if it's connected, but it's going to be able to slide. I'm going to put my, my cut right in between there. And that way, as it opens, it'll slide apart. So uh, this actually doesn't need to be this long. So I'm going to actually mark this about right here. So then, yeah, I'm going to take my uh, cutters here. I'm actually going to cut this, which is usually a no-no, but in this case, it's going to work. And what that does is that pinches the end off so that it, nothing can get through. I keep putting my wire down. <laughs> it keeps blending in with the wires I have on my desk. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So there we go. A little little sheath here. And then once I get it uh, welded on, and I don't know if I've done a video on this, but it, I'm gonna do this kind of like an e-arch. Uh, I'm gonna put a support on here. Like this. And I'm gonna weld those two joints together and uh we'll see how that holds up okay okay let me change my camera around here So y'all can see the welding part. Hopefully y'all can see the welding part. I don't know how well this turns out on the live stream, but this is my, the tip I'm going to use. Get my trash can out of the way so I can get in here. I think I need to, um, let me do another picture in picture. That way it's not too boring of a shot. It kind of lines up. So I'm going to do, yeah, let me change out this tip. I'm just looking at it. Oh, yeah, that side's still good. So both sides of this little electrode, this is my Puck D5 Pulse Arc Welder. And it's by Lampert. And it has been a great little welder for me. I am wondering if I should kind of loop these together first, but let me try this. If, it, if this doesn't work, then we'll, we'll kind of, uh, uh, let me do a low setting first. There we go. And I'll hold these two pieces together close by each other and Staying still, Cade, pay attention. Almost had the wrong setting. Done that many, many times. There we go. I'm gonna spread out my welds because I don't want it to warp. And then I'm gonna come back. Oh, I turned my argon gas off. On, it's off. Say the right words, Cade. I'm just kind of going to go back and forth on this weld. Like I said, I don't want to distort the inside of that. And if I do too powerful of a weld um, and I don't spread out these welds too much, it will cause problems. And so I'm just kind of doing one. Let me see if I can get this in the video. Can you see it? Nope, can't see it. Okay, so I am welding, not in a row, just here, then move around, down a little bit here, move down a little bit here, here, here. And then I flip to the other side, do the same thing, and I flip them back, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna weld in between. So I'm gonna have a straight weld here, 
but I'm doing it slowly so again I don't warp the inside of this thing um, in fact I probably need to cut this to make sure that I am not uh, that I haven't welded this shut again this is going to be kind of tricky oh here we go I have to get my glasses on so I can see there we go yay so, so let me finish welding this I think we're good now we're not going to we haven't warped it yet. So I'm just butting my next weld right up against the previous weld that's there. I might have to change my tip of my TIG welder. And for those that have used a TIG welder before, you know how important that, how sharp that is. And I probably don't need to do, that had to be exactly beautiful. You know, it's going to be buried in acrylic. So I'm putting a new sharp. So I keep them in here. Uh, so I sharp, I sharpen them all at once. And then once when they're sharp, I, I stick them in the foam and they stick up like that. And the rest, I lay them down. So I know I'm which ones are sharp and which ones are dull. There we go. Just, you know, I, I don't want this to come apart. I doubt it's going to come apart. Again, like I said, this is mainly going to be buried in the acrylic. Excuse me. I had a good breakfast this morning. There we go. I think I'm going to stick with that. I don't want to have to do way too much. But there's my weld there. I'm going to go and high shine this so it's nice and shiny in the acrylic. Because, you know, the, the TIG welder kind of um, scorches it a bit. Uh, and I think this tube was already scorched from me soldering it. So, have to forgive me for a second. I'm going to run over to the uh, oops, wrong switch turn that off that is annoying I have a just a high shine wheel here I use some green rouge I guess uh, just metal high metal shine I've done this before where I've, where I've done these beautiful welds and then I put them in the acrylic, these clear acrylic, and then um, it, I've noticed that it was scorched or I didn't shine it enough. So then it looks like it, it's got rust growing on it in underneath. So there is my little weld joint. Let's see if I can get up closer. Yeah, that's my little weld joint. So I've put a tube onto an 040 wire. And I'm going to put it here on the model. Let's see if I can zoom in just a bit so you can see this better. Oops. Okay, so I'm going to bend this wire down the edge here. Actually, I'm going to mark this in red, right on the papilla right here. That This midline is really where I, I want to make sure I'm within this midline. I'm going to take my pliers. I'll we'll hold that unit as a as a whole, and I'm going to bend straight back. I'm just 
going to do some light bins. I'm not going to go in and out too much on here, but you see I'm trying to keep this joint right at that midline. So I do have, I need to bend this around here. I did use 040 wire. This is bending like 036. Nope, that's 040. I thought I was losing my mind for a second. Probably was. Probably am. Still losing my mind. Been so long since I did a live stream like this. I'm out of practice. Like I, like I was ever in practice with it. But I forget how much fun it is to do this. So this is the important part to me. Um, I've got to get this flat against this band. That, that That's one of the main requirements of this TIG welder is getting this completely flat against the band. All right, so that it can, so I can weld easier. Um, when it when there's a space there it does not work too well so right now I'm just making sure I'm holding it with my fingers just to make sure that um, it will be flush against that band so that band has has to absolutely touch that sorry that this wire has to absolutely touched the band uh, to get a good weld on there and again I'm, I'm gonna be soldering this um, again that's why I haven't uh, done any kind of work uh, as far as prepping for acrylic yet. All right, so I think I got it there. So now let's bend the other side. Make sure I'm using my 040 wire here. Oh, lost that again. So I'm going to round this off. I got a little rubber wheel here. And rounding this off, kind of tapering the end just a slightly bit, slightly bit, will help uh, this easy access in there. So I'm going to hold that till it. I'm going to all the way to the end, so it's it's bottomed out back here. And I'm just going to bend this. Actually, I think a lateral is going to go right there. If I'm not well. They're going to expand and then the lateral is going to go. So I actually need to move this in just a bit and mark it here. Because I think there's probably a lateral under here somewhere and a lateral under here somewhere. That's probably why they're expanding this so that those can start erupting. So there's enough space for those to erupt. So I'm going to actually just kind of bend this. Lost my mark. What I'm going to do. All right. All right, I'm, I just decided I'm going to do this. I'm going to add just, 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 just a touch of sticky wax right there. Just to hold these two pieces together so one's not flopping around. And make sure it's parallel with this side. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Keep bending it in. So, as that's holding together, I need to bend it here a bit all right so then that lets me expand this out just a bit all right so I'm gonna bend it here a bit now one of these days I know this this blue light that's on this camera is kind of harsh uh, I gotta figure out a good lighting either i got to change my black background desk or um to white or or contrast 
or something. I need to work on my lighting better. All right, so I think I'm touching this. Hopefully I am. This, this wire to this band, I'm gonna clip it. Please don't make me regret this. There we go. I'm gonna look at this at a different angle, so make sure I, I have it. See, I'm not touching on this side. So I do need to expand that out a little bit. So I'm just gonna bend it at the last point that's touching a tooth back here. Just put some three prongs on here. Expand it a little bit. It's always good to, to keep one side exactly where you need it the whole time, and then just kind of uh, work your way around. I hear some baby chicks out there, and I wish I had a duck cam so I could see them. But no, my phone's decided to mess up today. Or actually, I don't think it's my phones. I think it's Sling Studio. So those that, that know me, I use Sling Studio for my live streaming, so I can use a bunch of cell phones. This overhead cam right here is actually a Sony A6000. All right, so I think I got that. What I'm gonna do real quick is I'm just gonna add a, oh, I can just grab it gently. I'm just gonna add just a little bit of pink wax on this joint. <laughs> Hold both sides, Kate. Gonna add just a little bit of pink wax on here and that will keep the acrylic from from finding its way into that tube while i'm sprinkling it there we go just like a little ball and so if you have a steamer a steamer is my friend as if you know and so after i cut this i'm going to steam it out and that should clear out just a little bubble of acrylic uh in the a little bubble in the acrylic And actually, I might have to cut that just a little bit wider than I normally would. But so far, so good. I am liking how this is turning out. Again, this was a big experiment. What I may do is, see this corner right here? You see, I've, I made enough room for the, the uh, lateral. I may not have made enough room for the lateral. I'm gonna take a stone wheel and take care of this little corner the corner was created by when I cut the tube and I pinched it off, it made a little corner there. So actually I'll just take my rubber wheel and do it. Oh, I put just a dab of wax right in that hole. I don't want acrylic to get in there. There we go, I think I got it. That'd be the worst is uh, doing all this and then in the end, actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna carve this off a bit. There we go. I just want the wax in that hole and not, this one I won't be able to steam, so this will live forever in the wax. I mean, in the acrylic. This wax will live forever in the acrylic. But, you can see now that I have made room for this lateral coming in. So I think I have touching pretty good on both sides. So I'm just going to tack the wires down with some sticky wax. There we go. I'll let that set up. While that's setting up or cooling down, I'm I gotta sharpen some some uh, electrodes here. So I, I have actually bought this is a electrode sharpener that Lampert makes. Then it's a pretty basic little thing, but it does a pretty good job. So I just hold the thing against here. I just tried to step, that's how muscle memory I have. I just tried to step on my, uh, my foot pedal for my hand piece, but th doesn't have, this doesn't have a foot pedal. It's got this little button right here. 
So I'm actually just going to do a few of these just for time's sake. You don't, y'all don't need to see this, but if y'all ever wondered how I sharpen my electrodes, and I, I try to do it at a, you know, a certain angle that gives me like a 10 degree angle or something like that, or 10 degrees off 90. Let me do another one. There we go. Again, sharpened electrodes are your friend when it comes to pulse arc welder. Now, I wish I did have a laser welder. That would be awesome. So, all right, back to uh, let's see, this camera angle, well, come on, there we go, back to this camera angle, and we will attempt to weld this to the bands, I'm going to go ahead and put my little container there, put a nice sharp electrode in here, like that, slide it in, and ready to go. So let's see if I can not make a mess of this. So I my settings, I'd put it on the lowest settings on here. Uh, if y'all need to know, it's 28% power and 1.5 milliseconds on the time. And okay, yeah, both these look pretty good. I could have done a better job on this one. But maybe I can get it. Actually, you're supposed to... I usually try to check the bands one last time, make sure they didn't shift uh, on me. One thing about these bands on these 3D printed models... Especially when I know we're getting bands from the doctor, I, I know for sure, 100%, it fits the patient's mouth. Because, you know, it comes straight from the patient's mouth to me. Um, I'm glad they put it in little uh, heat shield or um, those heat packages. Autoclave, that's the word I'm looking for. Word of the day, autoclave. All right. Wow. Ow, stab myself. So I got a little weld there, and I got a little weld there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this off the model, and I'm gonna put a little bit of solder on here. Um, we're gonna clean it up, and we're gonna put it back on the model, and we're gonna get it ready for acrylic. Now I don't know if we're, if we're gonna do anything as far as uh, um, trimming the acrylic. Y'all have seen me do that before, but we'll get it, I'll, I'll sprinkle it, and then pay attention to my Retainer Designer Instagram and Facebook page. I'll post pictures there of the final product. That way y'all can see uh, how this turned out. Uh, I just don't want to go too long and lose y'all's attention. Again, hopefully next week we can start up with the... Uh, the interviews again. I've I've been enjoying them. I hope y'all have too. It's just neat to hear from from other ortho lab owners, movers and shakers. I'm, I'm I got an email out to interview someone from Great Lakes uh, that that does hands-on courses uh, in Great Lakes. A lot of people got their starts there. The reason I'm being careful here is I don't want to bend this. I don't want to torque it in any way. And Peter is crowing for some reason. Um, my stream yard that I used to live stream has an auto thing. Uh, and I don't know if it's picking up the chickens in the background or not. Y'all have to tell me. One thing I'm going to do is, before I solder this, I'm going to put my first layer of um, separator on here. I think someone is trying to lay an egg under the lab. 
so this is just utility rope wax the same wax like they would give kids that have braces you know in case they have um wires poking them or, or rubbing them raw on the inside of the mouth or something like that and i'm just going to fill this in because i want the acrylic to extend past where the laterals would be so i'm just going to wax a little some some like dams in here um so whenever I'm, I'm sprinkling in here, the, the, it just keeps spilling out the front. Now you can hold it with your finger if you want. I've seen some people do that. Um, but, you know, fun stuff. All right. So as that cools a little bit, I'm blow on it. I'll put a couple drops of separator and and a paintbrush. Oh, it's soaking. <laughs> Might as well just paint the whole thing. And I'll paint the outside too. And I'm going to put this under, I have a little desk fan here. Uh, if you can see here, I have a little desk fan and I'll just put that right there. Uh, and that's what I use to uh, dry. I got to put two coats of this on 3D separator for my 3D printed models. So I have a little desk fan. And I'll, I'll paint it on there, set it there, let it. It dries a lot faster than just sitting there. Than just sitting there. That sounds weird. I just saw something. I'm making sure this tooth is flared out like that. Okay, it is. See, if I was looking at this, and this one was kind of... Oh, you're not seeing this. This one's kind of angled down right here. And that one's kind of flat, but that's how the teeth are in the mouth. Okay, so let's solder this. Let me get set up over here, and I'll move one of my cameras over for the little soldering that I do. So yeah, I do, I do a mixture of arc welding and soldering. I think if I did laser welding, uh, I could probably get it pretty good where I wouldn't need to solder, but I do like to solder to kind of help smooth some of these rough, uh, smooth this out. It just adds a little bit extra, extra retention, a little extra smoothness. But I think it looks good. Okay, moving the camera. Don't mind me. This is my soldering station over here. I gotta make sure. I got too much stuff in the way. I think y'all can see that. This is my soldering board. I think I got it from Amazon actually. Check the link below. There should be an Amazon link down there, and uh, you should be able to see if I, hopefully I, I linked it down there. I need to keep a little blue brush here. There we go. So this is just silver solder. Uh, from I get it from JBC and Company. Uh, I don't think she makes this herself. She just goes out and finds the best stuff uh, and uses that. And, and resells that. So I'm just going to paint my flux on here exactly where I want. Am I in the picture here? I'm trying to look. Sorry. There we go. So painting a little bit of flux. I'm going to put this on the this uh, solder table here. So I can't burn it. I, I, well, you can see I did some burn marks on here, but you know what I mean. Nope. Uh, I do have my heat shield in a uh, syringe. And I just fill up the bands because you got to be careful with these thin, thin bands. Uh, if they overheat, they will break in the mouth, uh, which is not good.
So I'm protecting the distal and the mesial. Usually there are teeth there if you're doing a stone model. There's teeth there to kind of protect the mesial and distal bands. Uh, uh, and then I'm, I'm protecting the wire that's coming out of the flux. Because uh, the flux will also protect the wire a little bit. So now i got to find my... There we go. I've got my solder here. And i got my torch. And I'm just using a simple little blazer torch. This goes, trust me, this goes a lot faster when I don't talk. And what I'm doing is I'm just soldering to that uh, flux turns clear. And then I know it's at the right temperature to flow my solder. And I don't put too much. I don't make it big and bulky. I'm going to angle this a little bit. i got to change. One of the best skills I ever learned was learning to solder using the torch with my left hand. But it helps with, you know, because I always like to angle the torch away from the, the wire or the framework in front of it. Because uh, if you're not careful, you can definitely burn your wire and if you turn see your wire turn red you've just killed it meaning it, it's 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 turned dead soft and it'll probably break of course i want to pay attention to my... all right can i jump that little ball of solder up there maybe maybe not come on bot solder jump up there i know you can do it you gotta be careful, I'm getting this wire hot. Alright, looks like I am grinding that little ball of solder off. <laughs> Alright, that's that's fun. So now I'm going to go take this. Let me get a thing here. Here we go. Just be careful where you touch it. Hopefully the heat shield did its job and it's not hot. I don't think it is because my wax that I did right here between the, the joint isn't melted. If that was melted, that means my the heat shield, the flames got past it. So I'm going to go steam this real quick. Sorry for the, the sound that's about to come up. It is going to get loud and I apologize. And it makes my chickens mad. Okay. Here is the solder. I'm actually going to go ahead and grind on this. I usually don't. Uh, but you can see a big old ball of solder right there that I need to grind off. Uh, which is lovely. Uh, I hadn't had that happen to me in a while. But I think I was trying to get it the 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 what I was doing in the camera. And I was I was hitting the 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 wire with the flame instead of the joint. And so it was curling up the the solder on me. So let me I'm gonna grind this off real quick. To put a mask on. I'm not talking because I'm holding my breath. You know, the old school math. mask. Hold your breath. Okay, I'm just doing a basic, generic. 
precursor. All right. We are winding down. Oh, one more. One more layer. Don't ever forget the second one. That'll give me time to fix this little uh, wax stopper thing that I have put on here. So a lot of this stuff, some of these more complicated things are not as complicated as you think. It's just a matter of doing, you know, you, you, you've done this on the e-arch and you've done this on the other thing and you, you know, you've, you've, you know what I realized? <laughs> I didn't put the, I didn't put the RPE on. I got all excited. I wasn't supposed to daughter this yet. Oh, that is hilarious. Here I am all bragging about. Oh, it's so easy. You just do this and that and this. No, no, okay. You forgot the RPE, the main part. All right. Let me get my model back here. Let's let's do this again. So, scratch that whole part of soldering. <laughs> I think this might have shifted on me. So I need to bend it down a bit. See why it's just catching on this. I'm just kind of hand bending this just a bit. Trying to get that to fit a little bit better on that tooth. There we go. There we go. All right. Now the RPE. I can't believe I forgot the RPE. I was working so hard on those arms there and they're just, I need to spread that open. It's not touching. I must have uh, pushed it in too far. Okay, I got my RPE. I use these, this Dr. Loxy's Leone 1621, or what is this called? I don't know. It usually has a number on here. This is the sticker for JBC, but it's called a stealth. Stealth. So let me cut this open. And grab the two arm RPE out of here. Put it in here. Oh, we got a comment. Luciano, hello. How are you doing? All right. Luciano from Brazil. I wonder where all the rest of you are from watching. Uh, me mess up everybody watching me mess up forgetting to put the rpe on there i wonder how far i would have got like i said doing this live stream get the monologuing and it slows you down and you get distracted so this is a two arm rpe uh stealth uh it's a maxillary one i think you can use it lower too but i like to use it like this with the arms coming this way, I think it fits better, but you can also use it. There's an, okay. The other one, uh, you can actually use it. Uh, there's an arrow here and you can bend the arms up this way. But uh, as you can see, the body is triangular. It's got a flat bottom and a triangular top. I'm actually gonna put just a little bit of wax right here. Uh, that's okay. Uh, and that's just going to serve two purposes. It's going to kind of keep me from, you know, putting this in the roof of the mouth. And um, it's going to kind of hold my my RPE a bit just to, uh, so it doesn't slide around on me while I'm trying to cut the arms and bend the arms. Again, I'm going to put the arrow facing 
rotating this way toward the toward the distal or the posterior and I always like to position it almost like even with the uh, mesial of the sixes and kind of angle the arms back like you see here um, that way they don't it doesn't feel like it's gagging the kid but I got to be careful that I don't move it by moving these arms bending these arms backwards so I'll grab the whole body of the screw and I'll just push these arms backwards like that and then you can see here I got a little impression of the the screw in the wax I'll just set that in the wax and see if my arms are touching it's touching on this side but not this side I think my cat is scratching at the door. Nope, that is my wife coming in to get some ice. <laughs> I thought it was Lily at the door trying to get in. Did she sneak in again? I had a good shot of the ducks, but my multi-camera thing is messing up. No, it's... uh. If I turn on one camera, so I have four camera slots on my mixer here. And uh, so the duck cam is my fourth camera slot, but it keeps replacing my third one, which is already my other camera. So I'm just like, oh. So every time I turn the duck cam on, it replaces that one. And then I turn this one on, it replaces the duck cam. And it's not one thing, it's another. So I'm touching on this side, but not this side. There we go. There we go. Now, noticed I had ground. So I, now I need to laser weld this. <laughs> Again, I can't solder on these models because they'll just smoke and catch fire. So uh, I'm going to use a little bit of sticky wax here. to hold it and while that cools I'll, I'll tell you what I'm talking about uh, notice I ground down to to expose the wire it's kind of hard sometimes to, to solder to laser weld to solder I've noticed um, it does some weird things so I'm gonna tack it just enough so I can pull this back up off the model and solder again uh, so let me move my camera again There we go. Now this one I'll turn up the heat a bit. Because uh, these are bigger wires. I'm not welding directly this wire directly against the band. Uh, but I'm kind of wire to wire. There we go. Actually, it's kind of nice with that solder on there. I don't know what I was saying before. It is giving me some scorched earth looking stuff on there. But the solder is actually melting with it. Let me try to get up underneath here. The more welds I can do, that's not working. There it goes. So the more welds that I can do makes it more stable uh, to get this off the model. So let's switch to here. Y'all did not see that at all. I did, forgot to switch the camera. 
All right. Where's my knife? Over here. So I'm just gonna remove a little bit of this wax to make this easy to come off. I'm just trying to tease this off of the model. Again, without trying to torque the bands while I'm doing it. That's what makes it handy with these this band remover. I actually had a, a doctor's office send me one that they were retiring anyway. Uh, so they sent it to me and I was like, yay, I can get these off better. There we go. Trying to get it off. Come on, get off. There's a little knife to get up underneath the band. Because I, mean, I can just pull this straight off like that, but you can see how it, it flexes it a little bit. It causes that to twist. There's just a, like a catch on this side or something. There we go. All right. Got to make sure that it... So there's our framework. So this, again, is a tube weld it to an 040 wire that I did earlier. And then this 040 wire is going into that tube. And so we're gonna put a bite plate here and then we're gonna make a slice right down the middle, but not cut into the wire. So then the wire will be inside that tube uh, as it expands and provide some uh, support. Uh, I don't know why. Sorry, my batteries are dying. All right, back to here, I'm gonna put just a little bit of solder. Hey Sarah, could you grab that? Oh, you're about to leave? Grab that battery pack on the duck cam and bring it in here. My battery on my little video switcher is about to die. It's charging, but it's not charging. Yeah, it's outside in front of the duck cam. And so, the duck cam is in front of the, the ducks. So you all have probably seen me do this before. I've got a little tin waxing dish. I've filled it up with heat shield uh, and that just helps hold this in place. And then I'm just going to use um, same method as before. Come on! <laughs> Bye! Alright, y'all give me a second. I gotta see if I can change this battery out. There we go. Hopefully that'll charge. I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't know why, but my charger on my iPad's not charging very good oh there we go I got my camera back over here you see my wife messed with the uh, the duck cam and it like activated and then turned this one off that's why it went blank on us okay just add a little bit more for protection and again I fill up the bands with this because I don't want this of course I don't want the solder to slide on the inside of the bands and then you're grinding that out and you don't know you know how much to take off um so hopefully this doesn't take 
much and I can get the uh, solder to blend together and that's a big big hope here one of these days I gotta I gotta get myself to trust I think I'm getting close with my skills uh, to being able to just weld and, and not solder uh, I've started doing it on RPEs on the on the front legs the forearm RPEs I started doing it on them uh, just straight up welding and not anything else. Uh, but I still weld the, the back part against the bands. Um, it's just I don't trust myself. It's just such a pinpoint. You know, with solder it spreads it out over the whole width of the band, the, the, the joint. And with laser welding or, or, or pulse arc welding it is just such a such a pinpoint right at a certain point of the band I feel like it tears the band easier so I'm going to pull this up out of the heat shield and I'm gonna go steam it off again sorry for the sound uh, of, of the steamer so just fair warning Rio Grande do Sol State my city was hit by extra tropical cyclone. Lots of serious damage, but I'm fine. Oh my gosh, Luciano, I'm sorry. Rio Grande do Sul State. Oh wow. Yeah, I think there's something hitting Florida um, pretty soon that might be pretty bad. Uh, in Con in Contado City, my city. Oh, okay. I'll have to look that up. I want to see that on a map. So I'm going to look that up later and see where that's at. That's very cool. So I'm glad you're safe. Uh, it looks like you had to get out of the, the cyclone that was coming. Uh, speaking of cyclone, watch your ears. I went ahead and redid the. I uh, uh, went ahead and, and steamed the the wax out of here, out of this little uh, it, junction here. But let me show you this. the The whole thought of this. So as this expands, right, this will expand with it. So let me see how that pulls apart like that. Actually, I'm going to go steam it some more to get all that wax out of there. But you can see how it'll, it'll slide out from one another. Yeah, that that wax, it uh, will get everywhere if you're not careful. Yeah, that's way better. It was a little, little boggy, little groggy. Like this. Back and forth. So that is the function of this. So now I'm going to cover this all with acrylic. But first, I'm going, I am going to wax that junction a bit. I just do not want to get acrylic in there all this work and I'll have to just totally redo it so I'll have to actually test this when I get it uh, done and make and put a key in here and turn it you know four to six turns just to make sure that this is expanding in the front so as this expands back here this will expand up here I'm gonna put one more coat on here I know this will be kilt three but I'm wary of this 3d printed model the, and the separator tends it's really thin um, so it, sometimes it tends to scratch up a bit 
if you work on it a lot, so if you prep the model and you paint and you, you dry and then you paint and then you dry, uh, it will actually cause problems with um, uh, doing, uh, you, you could scratch off the separator and it will actually uh, cause a problem. So let me get some paper towels and get set up. We'll go ahead, what we're gonna do is we're going to, um, We're going to, uh, I'm going to sprinkle it. I'll just do it right here. It's just a little bit, um, put it in the pressure pot. And then uh, I'm going to end the stream there. It's, I've already gone over an hour. So, uh, and then uh, I'll post pictures. So follow uh, Retainer Designer on Instagram and I'll have posters, pictures posted later today on how this ended up. Or, or uh, Facebook Retainer Designer. Uh, I should have links. That'd be smart of me to put links. Okay. So I'm going to be using this super fine splint polymer um, from JBC, super fine splint polymer, and this uh, tinted clear. So this will make it really super clear uh, and make it look like an ice cube, which is what I love. Uh, so that's what's in this bottle. If you're wondering what's in the bottle is uh, this super fine splint. So I use splint for, you know, obviously splints, but this is kind of one. The teeth are actually gonna be grinding on it pretty good because they're actually gonna be chewing uh, and grinding, uh, eating in this thing. It's cemented in your mouth, so they're gonna be eating in it. Uh, so I'm gonna use splint because uh, the other stuff I've started using for retainers uh, won't withstand to grinding as, as well. So let's do this. I got to get my picture in picture here, you know, I got to be fancy. So now we got a paper towel here. You can see the problems I have with the colors. So I'm going to put this back on. Now, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and uh, something's changed on me. So my picture has just died on me. I think I have a piece of something underneath here, so I'm just going to wax this down to hold it in place. Um, sometimes that's the bad thing about um, using these uh, wax matrixes, is sometimes when you pull it up, it'll peel up and kind of get in your way. And another option you can put on here are actually soldered uh, rest on here. Still flaring up. Okay, okay. I'll take it off. I didn't want to. But I'll take it off. You just gotta do the hard thing. Where is that knife that keeps just y'all seen it disappear? Y'all saw it. Y'all saw it disappear. This is just like every other uh laboratory. It's always the knives that disappear. I'm going to, I'm attempting, I'm over here, I'm trying to attempt to reconnect my laptop because obviously this is not working. I don't know why this isn't charging my, my daughter's done something to my. Um, iPad here, I can't get it to charge to save my life. Nope, still not charging. Maybe this is why she stopped using it. There we go. Still haven't found my knife. I just need to sprinkle this one last thing. We can go. Here, here's a knife I found. I don't like this one, but you get your favorite knives, you know? The one you like to use the most. Actually, what might be happening is sometimes the solder joint will be a little bigger than you planned it to be. And so remember how I was saying while I was putting this down, you you have the opportunity to go ahead and, and trim the solder joint, um, shine it up if you want. 
uh, before we do the acrylic part. So I think that's good. I'm going to go ahead and take that out just in case that was the problem that was making my thing float. Oh. Okay. There we go. Okay. So this, what I was talking about is this solder joint right here underneath. So you got to be careful when you do this method that this solder joint, it may start impinging on these gums right here. Now in the mouth, these gums will move out of the way, but you don't want to do that too much. Uh, it's not good for it. So let me see if I can find a good burr here that will help with this. I'm just going to... I'm just kind of uh, thinning this down. Let's do this side now. And I, I would, if I had this, I'd go ahead and, you know, if I had the time, I'd go ahead and do this. But I was wanting to show y'all sprinkling the, the bite plate part. But no, I, this thing decided not to fit. See, see the joy of doing this live? You get to see all the mistakes. I don't I don't get the, the, the beauty of editing it. Okay, yeah, that fits way better now. Okay, so that's what it was. You can see how close it is on the gums that are here. All right, and we got that little wax right there. So I'm gonna fill this up with wax or uh, acrylic and then uh, I won't, we will just cut it with a burr very gently to open this up. And so it'll help to have that uh, wax there. So once we hit wax, we know that we are close to the wire. Let's see. Sorry, I gotta connect to this because this is not connecting. So wonderful. And are we connecting now? Yes, connect, join. All right, while that's connecting, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'll put a little acrylic. So I get that first, you know, that first layer kind of wet. Oh, see, the bubbles are coming up now. So I'm glad I got that pretty wet. Move this around just a bit. Make sure we get acrylic up underneath it. Bubbles are still coming up. wax dot looks ugly right now but I promise you it will be gone again I, I lean heavily on my uh, steamer sorry I'm trying to Connect while I'm doing this, connect my laptop to the live stream so I can control it, but it's not letting me. So again, I really just want this to cover lateral to lateral and I'm just kind of building it up 
And I'm making just a shelf, just a flat shelf. I'm just gonna add just a little bit. I'm gonna let that soak up. Let me go get my, um... oh, that's why it won't connect. So I have it on my laptop back here now, since the iPad decided to mess up on me. So I'm just gonna gently cut this while it's doing its initial setup. And again, I'm cutting it away from the canines or the C's. I'm not doing this in my usual spot, so all my tools are across the room. Good thing I got chairs with wheels on it. I got rollerblade wheels on my chairs. That's me just scoot across the lab. So I'm gonna just clear this off the incisal edges a little bit. This will just help, you know, release this when it comes time to uh, take this off the model. There we go. So I'm gonna put that in the pressure pot. That is ready to go. You see, it's it's nice and thick. So I'll just trim it flat whenever. It, like I won't show that part. That's pretty basic. Just trim it flat, trim it flat, and then we're just gonna cut it down the middle, uh, and then we'll steam it out, and then that should release it and be able to. It, those two pieces move independently of each other, uh, and to provide support that this two arm RPE needs. So let me put that in the pressure pot, and then we'll. Get going. Okay, so that's it. I hope it helped. Uh, sorry it took so long this time. I didn't think it was going to take that long. But again, when you have issues and connectivity issues, live streaming is, is fun. It's fun in itself. So I hope that helped everybody uh, how not to do it or give you an idea on how to do one of these uh, two appliances combined into one, uh, you know, the, the fixed bike plate and the RPE all combined into one. So hopefully that helps uh, with you, or if you have a, a, a pretty cool way of doing this, put it in the comments below. Let me let me know. I'm always open to better techniques than, than what I have. Uh, so I appreciate y'all paying attention and, and watching and staying with me through this. And again, Stay tuned next Friday. Hopefully we'll have a, another interview scheduled. Uh, or maybe I'll do an interview in one of these. Depends on how my week goes. It's the busy season uh, for us in, in the ortho lab world. Uh, and then I have, pay attention to the comment section. Uh, I may have some uh, surveys. I, I would love to hear y'all's opinion. I'm, I'm working on a big project that I'll announce uh, in a few months. Uh, and hopefully I can get some info, information from y'all. Uh, especially if you're looking to do a, a, a class or online courses, that's what I'm. That's the project I'm working on. But I want to build it the correct way where you get the best benefit. So if you're interested in that, contact me in the comments below, uh, and I'll send you a link. We'll do a Zoom call and see uh, exactly what you're looking for. So I, I'm, I, I can always report 100 hours of video, obviously. Uh, but I want to do the, the correct ones, the ones that will impact you and help you out the most. So uh, leave a comment below if you want any help with that. And uh, I will see y'all next week. Oh, hold on. Let me get my fancy uh, outro thing going. So until then, until next week, happy...